This is about the 11 highest paying jobs that do not require a college degree. I don't know about you, but I've been taught my entire life that the main way of becoming successful was to go to school, get good grades, and get a high paying job. And that was the way to do it. So I did, except none of that, literally none of that was true. In fact, a lot of those who graduated with me and even before me ended up moving back in with their parents, not having a job for years and years until they could find something within their field that they were qualified for, only for them to be making under $45,000 a year. And here's the kicker. I graduated from college with a degree that was very hard to get, at least for me, and I found out that my first job did not require a degree. There's an immense amount of pressure on college students nowadays to become doctors, lawyers, engineers, but you can get the same if not more pay doing these other jobs and it won't require a degree or any kind of debt let's get into it so i feel like this doesn't actually match the video it's much better all right keep in mind guys we're going in reverse order so the salaries are going to go up as we keep going throughout this video coming in at number 11 we have court reporters. They have a median salary of $57,150 and they have an expected job growth of 7%. These guys literally type up word for word transcriptions of trials and other legal proceedings. Sometimes judges even ask them to read back information for them and they also transcribe audio evidence as well. And as promised in the title of the video, this requires no degree whatsoever. But what it does require is a certificate in stenography and a bunch of educational institutions around the world offer this program and generally it takes about two years to complete. In those two years, they'll learn stuff like legal procedures, terminology, dictation, and voice writing technology. Coming in at number 10, we have elect electronics and installation repairs and this sounds like exactly what it is these guys install and repair electronics to be specific these guys repair stuff like gaskets motors fuses stuff like that and in order to install and repair electronics these guys need to refer to what are called service guides or other types of specifications as well as testing the equipment after the repair and i don't mean to make this job sound easy by any means because it's not but that is the gist this job salary is heavily impacted by the amount of hands-on training you already have on top of the work experience you already have within the same field and these guys have a median salary of fifty seven thousand eight hundred ninety dollars just keep in mind the main downside to choosing this career is that it's actually shrinking by one percent per year and it's actually starting to slowly but surely get replaced by technology Fun fact, coming in at number nine, we have fire inspectors. This is like being a crime scene detective, but for fires. It's their job to figure out what happened, who was responsible for this fire, and why did it happen. They also go in to check to see if all of the fire extinguishers in the facility were actually working properly, and if the correct regulations and guidelines and procedures were followed. This requires you to have a few years of experience at first. And I used to get so annoyed whenever I would apply to a job and they would say that I need experience. And I would be like, experience in what? How am I supposed to have experience at this job if you won't hire me to do this job in the first place because I don't have experience? It makes no sense. Well, well, for this job, you'll actually just need experience as a firefighter as well as some on-the-job training before you're actually qualified. And these guys make about $62,512 annually. Number eight, we have aircraft mechanics, and they make about $63,000 per year. And honestly, I think I've always thought of this as one of the more exciting jobs on this entire list because I personally just like the idea of working on stuff specifically aircrafts. Aircraft mechanics do regular inspections, repairs, and maintenance on aircrafts. The main thing here is keeping the aircraft in operating conditions and also to keep it in safe conditions so that no one falls out of the sky because that happens. And this job requires a certificate that's recognized by the FAA. And if you don't know what FAA is, it's the Federal Aviation Administration. All right, number seven is definitely an interesting one. It's actually a theater makeup artist. And I know it's mostly guys who watch my channel, so I don't imagine you'd be interested in this. And for the two females who watch my channel, this might actually interest you. But this is actually an entry-level job, requires no degree whatsoever, and it is one of the highest paying jobs that don't require a degree. 
In fact, their median income is over $64,000 per year, and they have an expected 7% job growth, which, by the way, is more than the median income for your average actor or actress. This is an entry-level job, but it would help you a lot if you pursued training in cosmetology prior to applying, because that would just give you the edge over everyone else who applied and doesn't. And of course, this will require some on-the-job training, which you will get once you land the job in the first place. Because it's actually a skill to apply makeup to the performers that fits the scene, the setting, and the role of the performer. Alright, number six, we have claims adjusters. Insurance companies hire claims adjusters to investigate insurance claims and interview people involved with certain insurance situations. All to prevent and minimize insurance fraud because if it keeps happening and it goes unnoticed, it could ruin an insurance company. The key about this job is choosing a sector that actually does not require a degree, which a lot of them don't require a degree, but some of them do, such as the automotive sector. Keep in mind, this job is expected to shrink 4% in the future. Coming in at number five, we have firefighter supervisors. These guys are on the front lines with the firefighters, managing and directing firefighting to ensure the safety of the entire community and the firefighting team. And this job requires some real leadership because you're literally leading people in life or death situations and you're ensuring the safety of not just your team, not just your department, but the entire community that surrounds the area. And the median salary for firefighting supervisors is $76,330 per year. But these guys can easily make upwards of $100,000 a year. And it's a dangerous but rewarding job and my hat goes off to those guys. Along with some moderate on the job training, you'll also need between one and five years of firefighting experience. And the job growth for this is at the national average of 5% and there's always gonna be a need for these guys. All right, number four, we have elevator technicians. I don't have to tell you that elevators can be dangerous. I mean, they lift several people up several floors. It could go bad very fast. These guys fix them. Now, on paper, this job doesn't require anything more than a high school diploma, but you'll need a pretty good understanding of math and mechanics if you want to do this job effectively and correctly. A great trade job because they give you all the tools you need to be successful. And they do so by requiring you to go through a four-year apprenticeship where they pair you with a very experienced worker and you learn all the tricks of the trade with them. No pun intended. And the apprenticeship is often just a mix of on-the-job training and also in a classroom setting, whether it's in the business or through a local union or in a classroom in like an educational institution. And this is where they learn about several different safety precautions as well as how to read blueprints. Also keep in mind, you're gonna to need to be pretty strong if you're gonna do this job. Oftentimes, elevator technicians have to carry very heavy equipment up at very high levels. Their median salary is $79,780 with a whopping job growth of 10%. With there being more and more multi-use facilities being built around the world that require elevators, these jobs are going to be needed for a very long time. Coming in at number three, we have commercial pilots, not airline pilots. That requires a degree. I'm talking about commercial pilots. They earn a median income of $82,240 per year with an expected job growth of 8%. This job isn't extremely hard to get. What you need is a high school diploma as well as a commercial pilot's license, which you can get in six to eight weeks through a flight school that is approved by the FAA. And the cost for this is anywhere between $5,000 and $16,000, which is astronomically cheaper than any type of four-year degree ever. Commercial pilots are involved in unscheduled flight activities such as charter flights and aerial tours. Sometimes they even load their own luggage, schedule flights, and schedule maintenance for the aircraft. Coming in at number two, we have power plant operators, and these guys are extremely experienced. They plan and direct all the operations of a power plant, and specifically they control and monitor boilers, turbines, generators, and auxiliary equipment in power generating plants. They distribute power demands among generators and combine the current from all the generators and maintain voltage and regulate electricity flows from the plant. Holy crap. I'm not even gonna pretend like I wanna even begin to think about the amount of responsibility these guys have, but just know these guys have to be attentive, detail-oriented, and careful because if they aren't, 
things can go bad. And they earn a well-deserved $83,020 per year. And in order to get this job, you're really going to need a high school diploma and five years of experience within its respective field. But this job is expected to drop another 6% in the next few years because of all of the clean energy initiatives that we have going on right now. Coming in at number one, arguably the most challenging and most difficult job out of every single job I've just talked about, transportation and distribution managers. They plan, coordinate, and direct multiple systems and processes that relate to transportation, distribution, storage, and delivery. These guys have a lot of responsibility. I mean, to put it into perspective, these guys manage managers who manage other people who are supposed to deliver items from one place to another safely in the best quality possible, as consistently as possible, without messing up, without mislabeling packages, without sending defective parts, without being late to its respective distribution center. I mean, trucks are going in and out and unloading and loading and you can't get hurt but you're lifting heavy items and there's just so much that goes in to these things to make this a successful business and these guys have to absolutely positively be top notch at what they do and they have to be great leaders and there's honestly a lot more that goes into it but that's all you need to know for now and again you only need a high school diploma to get this job now a degree would help but there's tons of top managers right now in the distribution and transportation industry that only have high school diplomas. And all you also need on top of that is five years of experience in distribution. And this has a 6% job growth in the future. So I can't tell you how much I wish I would have known about this stuff when I was in college, but more than anything, I wish I would have learned about stuff like investments and compound interest and passive income quicker because with these jobs these jobs are all great but you're still trading your time for money i didn't learn that you didn't have to trade your time for money all the time like for your whole life literally until right after i graduated from college which was also depressing but that is a story for another day thanks so much for watching guys i'm reggie bryant and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you control your finances and control your life and really get the life that you want out of this and be in as much control as possible so thanks so much for watching so if you like this video leave a like and subscribe i appreciate every single one of you and i will see you in the next video What's happening guys? So I realize that there's quite a few people who comment on my videos where college doesn't interest them or the only degrees that do interest them are the ones that will probably lead to them not being able to get a job. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're going to be totally fine. There's a lot of options out there that are really amazing that aren't going to take that much time. Some don't take any time at all. They don't require any schooling. Some require like two years of schooling. Maybe you have to get some kind of certification. And then the most important thing is to never forget to smash the living daylights out of the like button. Smash. Because it does really help with the algorithm a lot, so thank you very much for doing that. And I already knew quite a bit about this before making the video, but after doing a ton of research, I found some really good ones, and I was just amazed, so you're really in for a treat. Now, studies have shown that your happiness doesn't really increase much above about $75,000 a year, somewhere around there, and so all of these careers are ones where the average is $75,000 or more. And after showing you the list, I'm also going to reveal the best resources that I know of because because a lot of these jobs are actually quite niche, they're difficult to find, and you need certain resources in order to even find them in the first place. So with that being said, let's jump right in and start off the list with number 10, which is going to be a nuclear technician. So nuclear technicians basically just assist nuclear engineers as well as physicists and anything related to nuclear energy. Now I know a lot of people are afraid of nuclear energy. And no nukes, no and several other jobs on this list are going to be related to that, to be honest with you, but you really shouldn't be afraid of it at all. Evidence over the last six decades of using nuclear energy shows that there's almost no risk whatsoever in something like Chernobyl happening again. I never forget this day. 
Now this is a great career path because it only really requires two years of schooling and you can make over $79,000 a year median. Now right now there's only about 7,600 jobs available out there and it's only expected to grow at negative 4% job outlook in the next 10 years, which is bad. That's like absolutely horrible because the average is four to 7%. But I really do see this one making a comeback because I see more and more countries adopting nuclear energy because it's it's just incredibly efficient. So for those reasons, I left it at number 10, but it's still a really solid choice overall. Number nine is gonna be dental hygienist. Now I'm not gonna include the traditional trades jobs like plumber, HVAC, anything like that, just because I made another list for those, but this one isn't really a traditional job because it doesn't really require that much muscle or you know physical capability. And because of that, it's also not very tough on your body like some of the trades jobs can be. Now, as a dental hygienist, you're going to be assisting dentists in doing things that they can do, but there's things that they probably shouldn't be doing. Things that are pretty easy, like dental cleanings or preventative care. Now, dental hygienists get paid about $75,000 a year right now, which is really solid, and they're expected to grow at about 11% in the next decade, which is much higher than the average 4 to 7%. There's also currently 219,000 jobs out there, which is quite a bit, and it's growing really fast, which means there's going to be even even more in the future. This means that it doesn't really matter where you live. You can live in your dream city if you want to. You can live in your hometown if you want to live with your family or something like that. You're pretty much always going to be able to find a job. You don't have to move out to an oil rig in the middle of the ocean just to make a living. Now it does require two years of schooling, which is why it isn't higher on the list, but this is still a very solid option. Number eight on the list is going to be air traffic controllers. And they're basically the guys up in those towers at the airports that direct all the flights. Now this is one of those jobs that's extremely stressful. It's very high skill. You have to have the clutch gene basically because you're going to be directing airplanes and if you mess up, Prepare for a really bad landing. the airplanes could literally run into each other. So it's an extremely important job and it pays extremely well on average, about $124,000 a year. So you might be wondering why this isn't ranked higher on the list. Well, it's only expected to grow about 1% in the next decade. There's only about 24,300 job openings right now. And on top of that, it does require two years of schooling. But overall, it's still a very solid option. Any of the ones that make it onto this top 10 list are still pretty good when you compare them to all of the other jobs in the world. Number seven is going to be a nuclear medicine technologist. Oh no, another one that has the word nuclear in it. <gasps> I think you scared me straight. It's okay. This one is perfectly safe as well. Now this is another one that requires two years of schooling, but it pays a really nice $76,800 or so uh, dollars a year median salary. There's about 19,300 spots open and the expected growth rate is a very solid 7%. Now you might be wondering, Shane, what the hell does a nuclear technologist do? I'm gonna try to explain this to you. Well, they generally help to prepare and administer radioactive drugs drugs that help doctors make extremely accurate images of the inside of a body. And this is a really good one if you're interested in medicine, but you don't necessarily want to get a four or six year degree. Number six is another radiation related career, and it's going to be radiation therapist. This is another one that's going to require two years in order to get the degree for it. As a radiation therapist, you help with the fight against cancer by helping to administer radiation treatment. Now, this is a tough one to get into because you're going to be around terminally ill sick patients all day long and that can be really difficult on you emotionally so it does take a certain type of person to do this job but overall you are really helping people out you're doing a huge service to society and not that many people can do a job like this so if you can do it um, you will be able to help a lot of people out. Now it does pay about $82,000 a year, which is extremely solid for a two year degree. That's one of the best ones on the list. There's 18,700 positions open right now. And then on top of that, it has a 9% growth rate in the next 10 years, which is very, very solid. Number five on the list is going to be power plant operators, distributors, and dispatchers. Now this is the first one on the list where you don't have to do any schooling whatsoever. All you need 
is a high school diploma or a GED. Now, basically what they do is they control the systems that generate as well as distribute electric power. Now, this one pays extremely well for one that you can get into right out of high school, over 83,000 median per year. Now, the number of job openings right now is about 53,000, which is pretty solid overall, but it has one really bad downside, and that is there is a negative 6% expected growth rate in the next 10 years. That's probably one of the worst ones on the list. But this is kind of a trend with jobs that don't require a lot of education, like the ones that you can get into without going to any school whatsoever you see this negative growth rate on a lot of them and they become saturated very quickly just because the barrier to entry is so low. So you might have to know somebody to get into this one. Uh, you also will have to do a really good job in order to keep your job. And so for that reason, that's why I didn't put it higher on the list, but it's still a really solid option for the right person. Number four on this list is going to be web developers. Now this is one of my favorite on the entire list and what they do in a nutshell is they design and create websites. Now, technically, the median on this one is about $69,000, $70,000 a year, but give me one moment before you get mad at me. I know I said that all of them were above $75,000, but here's the thing about this one. There's so many different specialties that you can get into when it comes to web development. You can do it on a very basic level where you're not gonna be making nearly as much, but there are many jobs available out there that are making way more than $75,000 a year. And on top of that, there's tons of bonuses and incentives and stock options for a lot of the companies out there that offer jobs for web developers. And so even if you are only making $69,000 a year base, chances are you're gonna get up over a $75,000 a year overall. Now there's a ton of jobs available out there, over 160,000 right now. And on top of that, it's gonna grow 13% in the next 10 years. So this is a very solid option. You don't have to go to any schooling whatsoever to get into web development. You can study it on your own. I actually learned how to do web development when I was a teenager and made some money on the side doing that. You don't have to be a genius to do web development. If I could do it as a teenager, you can definitely do it yourself. You're Albert Einstein. A lot of people that get into it are completely self-taught. They don't even need to take a course online or anything like that. But if you want to speed yourself up, you can take a cheap course on Skillshare or something like that, which they are not the sponsor of this video. So you don't have to worry about me rambling on for five minutes. Everything is moving towards, you know, the internet and seems like every business out there needs a website or maybe two websites. And so this one is becoming more and more important as time goes on. And I don't see it slowing down at all. Number three on the list is going to be transportation, storage, and distribution managers. Okay, so that was a mouthful and you're probably wondering what the heck they do. Basically, they deal with the logistics of the company, so transportation, storage, management, all that sort of thing. And in a world where everybody expects their package to get to them in one to two days, just like Amazon, this is a very lucrative skill to have. All that's required is a high school diploma or equivalent and you can make over $94,000 a year median. Now on top of that, it is expected to grow about 6% in the next 10 years, which is solid. Now the downside to this one is it does require a lot of experience in whatever industry you're in. So you'll probably have to start off at a lower job and then work your way into a job like this, just because you have to kind of get the basics down, even though you technically don't need a certification or any type of education, it does require quite a bit of experience. But I did have a cousin who got into a job like this with no experience and he started Started getting paid extremely well right off the bat. Number two on the list is going to be nuclear power reactor operators. Got a whole parade of nukes. And I promise this is the last nuclear power related profession that I'm gonna talk about today. How many nukes we have left in the bag? And it's not that I'm obsessed with nuclear power or anything like that. It's just that there's a lot of opportunity in this field. And these are the guys who operate and control nuclear reactors and they make sure that another Chernobyl doesn't happen. And of course they do more than that they do a lot of monitoring and testing and all that sort of thing. But overall, that's their main job. Again, you only need a high school degree and it's expected to grow by a whopping 6% in the next 10 years. 
And that's with over 6,000 jobs currently available. And that's really good out of all the jobs in this field. But what you've been waiting for is they're making over $94,000 a year. That is totally insane for something that doesn't require a degree. You can start right out of high school. Which is totally awesome. Number one on the list is going to be software developers. Now this one's gonna be a little bit controversial, but let me explain. Technically, most software developers do have to get a computer science degree or something related to that in order to get a job in that industry. However, there are some jobs out there that don't require you to get a degree or even anything related to that. And there's actually an entire community that's popped up on Reddit and YouTube of people that teach others that have totally unrelated degrees or no degrees at all how to break into the software development industry. Some of these people are even working for companies like Google and Facebook. And there's a bunch of products that have popped up like boot camps, uh, different coding algorithms where you can do problems and stuff, uh, different courses and all sorts of things like that. And this one is honestly gonna be really tough to learn how to do without a degree but it is possible for you to learn and many people have done it. And you probably won't be able to break into any of the higher end jobs, especially not at first, but there are many stories of people breaking into the industry when they either don't have a degree at all or they have a completely unrelated degree. Once you're really good at your job and you establish a reputation for yourself, nobody's gonna care that you don't have a degree. Now this one pays on average over $105,000 a year, which is, you know, insanely good. There's over 1.3 million jobs available in the US right now, and it has an insane growth of 21% over the next 10 years. So there's already a ton of jobs available, and it's gonna have a ton more available in the next 10 years. So as promised, the three resources that I really like to use to find these niche jobs are gonna be one, Glassdoor.com. You're probably familiar with this site. There's a ton of sites out there that are very similar to Glassdoor.com, but basically it just goes over different jobs you can get, different companies that you can get those jobs with, and it talks about the job satisfaction as well as a bunch of other really important metrics like salary, etc. It makes everything very nice to look at as well. The graphs that they have on those sites are very nice. Now the second one that I use a lot is going to be BLS.gov, and this one is a lot more data intensive. It's kind of like Glassdoor Door, but it's not as fancy and nice and it has a lot more data and a lot more information available. Now BLS stands for the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's a government website and most of the time when you see the stats on my videos I get them from BLS. Now the third resource that I really like to use just to do initial research is forums. So for instance medical careers if you talk about you know studentdoctornetwork.com if you're into a medical career you probably recognize that one. That's a forum where a bunch of different medical medical related professions can get together and talk about all kinds of things from how hard the schooling is to you know how much different schools cost etc and i use forums like that to get ideas for looking up jobs on other websites. Even reddit.com has given me a lot of really good ideas with this sort of thing. But overall, check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and then comment down below any ideas you have on this video or any comments, criticisms, etc. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.